All right, everybody, it is June 20th, and today the newsletter is in video form. The entire thing's gonna be on video, and I'm tinkering. Um, candidly speaking, right, the fact of the matter is you're here. You're here on the newsletter, you're a subscriber to the newsletter, you've clicked. In other words, you know that there's something that's supposed to be out there. The fact of the matter is, is that video runs the world. Sorry, we don't have a society that reads books. We don't have a society that reads newsletter and not all the articles. In fact, someone very, very close to me says, you know, I get the newsletter. I, I'm so confused and overwhelmed by the number of different topics. I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to click. So instead, I'm just going to make this video. And I'm going to ramble, <clears throat> and you're going to forgive me for that. Okay? So in today's show, newsletter, if you will, video newsletter, what I'm going to be talking about is ways to get the book. Life's a Gamble, the video that and the presentation I made to a college retiree group at SVSU. Ali is the name of the group. And then I'm going to be talking about Medicare, of course. And lastly, I'm going to talk about, you know, the unenviable task. And this is going to be ongoing that the Federal Reserve has and its effect on financial markets and the psyche of everyone in today's economy. Okay, so those are the four sections. So the first is, um, before we get going on that, you know, this is the book, Maximize Your Medicare. Thank you so much to those of you who have, you know, written your review and bought the book. Please continue to do so. I don't control how other people perceive the book. I know it's in the book, obviously. Uh, it's not for financial purposes <laughs> and for my own financial gain, candidly. Uh, this book and the effort that, you know, I used to create this book, it probably comes out to, you know, a dollar an hour, dollar an hour, something like that. You know, that, and, and I've seen zero, zero money from the book, you know, to date, candidly. And that's just because of weird timing about a crazy business called book publishing. We're not going to solve that today. But I do thank the over 300 libraries in the United States that have purchased the book. Unfortunately, libraries are closed. So I rely on you, and you're the best word of mouth. You're my best advertisement. There's no question about that, right? Which I've always known, which we always kind of know that you're going to be the best advertisement. And that's kind of why I'm giving it away. I'm giving away the book to you. I'll give you a copy. I'll send it to you. I'll mail it. I'm going to pay for postage. Okay. Inside the 48 United States, all you need to do is tell someone and have them send me an email because they're turning 65 throughout the rest of 2020. Now, the fact of the matter is there's no obligation. And I can't obligate the person who writes me an email. I can't. I'm prohibitive from doing so. There are rules on marketing, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> I don't play close to the rules when it comes to all the rules about marketing that come around me. Probably should be more aggressive. I'm not. What I can do is I can send you a free copy of the book. Now, the fact of the matter is, and I understand that, you, go, you can say to yourself, okay, but I already know you. All I have to do is send you an email. I don't need a book. Okay. Take the book anyway, give it to your church, give it to your library, give it to someone who doesn't think they need the book. Fine. That's okay. That's okay. Because it does relate to the rest of today's you know, newsletter, which is, you know, up on YouTube this past week, I posted, what, two to three videos. We'll get to what they are. But the first video is kind of a rehearsal of what I said about the presentation called Life's a Gamble. And the important guts of the, of the video, Life's a Gamble, is the fact that that's a myth when it comes to the way that financial products work. Medicare just happens to be one of them. It's just a single instance of one. But this kind of myth, these kinds of missayings, missayings is not even a word, is it? misstatements, commonly held cliches, happy hour talk, senior hour talk. It happens at every age division. Every age division has this. But what ends up happening 
is the perception is wrong right from the jump. Right from the beginning, you get the wrong idea. I didn't get any money from my insurance. It's not worth it. Okay, th that wasn't the purpose of it. Or, you know, the company's just trying to rip me off. My health insurance company didn't pay a claim. It's trying to rip me off. You know, these are misperceptions. And I'm trying to, trying to correct the misperception because the ripple effect of the misperception is pretty serious. Right? If you misunderstood your extended warranty to your refrigerator, okay, you know, what's the downside? Well, you lost your $1,000 that you thought you were going to Best Buy and buying this extended warranty. Don't ask me why you did that. Where you under misunderstood some kind of payout structure. You misunderstood the cost versus the payout structure. In other words, the basic lesson from Life's Gamble is you, know, you need to follow the cash flow <clears throat> about what it costs, what you're giving up, right? I mean, whether or not the cost of that premium was life altering and all of a sudden you can't pay your electricity bill versus it just doesn't matter versus, you know, it's highly probable or it's never going to happen to me. That's a personal decision. But my point here is that people get the wrong framework right from the beginning so yeah, of course, then they haul it to the next topic. They take it to the next topic, health insurance. Okay, so now you're here. That's what this book is trying to correct, right? When you're under Medicare. That's not the end. That's not the end, right? For example, long-term care insurance. How to think about long-term care insurance, right? This is your elephant in the room. There's a video to say calling it the elephant in the room. I've made this presentation to the public, calling it the elephant in the room. Very confusing, very challenging. Understood, I'm gonna grant all of that. That said, what ends up happening is people take their misgivings that were wrongly concluded in the past and they give up on the next topic without properly considering it. And then, that topic is the one that comes to bite them. And so really the point of life's a gamble, the punchline, if you will, to life's a gamble is there are two punchlines. There every topic has to be thought of in this way. And if you stick to the principle, if you stick to it and don't get confused or distracted by advertisements, mail, phone calls, crazy people making videos like me if you but you stick to the objective at hand along the principles inside of life's gamble then you can think through every individual instance independently without being swayed by your friend over drinks at happy hour there's a second one there's a second one, it's right at the end of that presentation. You should watch the presentation, and it's important here. It's a subtle one, probably I could make an, int well, the reality is all the other ancillary topics are dealing with this. <clears throat> Meaning that you're gonna hear me talk, or you've seen me talk, maybe you've seen the clips, you know, I'm on the street.com with Bob Powell. We're gonna be releasing these three minute snippet, three of them every, you know, I record, basically three a month, right? So I'm going to be appearing on the street.com, which is, you know, Jim Cramer's website. And the point is that I can, this book, this book is about one element, one segment, one piece to a puzzle. This is not the complete solution because the problem here, and it's mentioned in here, which is that, there's an interaction with another topic. There's an interaction with another topic. What are they? IRA, Roth IRA conversion. Affordable Care Act subsidy. Required minimum distribution. Just this topic alone, whoops, just this book alone, right? is mentioning the fact that this is a piece of a coordinated set of pieces. To think of one piece in isolation is an error. 
That's an error. And the reality is, unfortunately, our society is such that advertisements, people like me, we're giving you a message which is telling you, hey, this is my area of expertise, therefore it's solely the most important. And what ends up happening is people end up, and people also have this mindset. I've got an insurance guy. I've got a stocks guy. Okay? Well, guess what? You mishandle your Roth IRA conversion. Now, all of a sudden, you have extra taxes on it. You have higher premium on Medicare. And, oh yeah, by the way, you receive this tax credit for your health insurance if you're not yet 65. And now, by the fact that the two didn't know about each other and the interaction between each other, your stock guy, right, pointed you to a particular thing that you can look on Google. Go ahead and look on Google. Roth IRA conversion. I promise it. And then, oh yeah, by the way, put in layup. Roth IRA conversion layup. Put it in there. I promise you, I guarantee it, without have looked at it, that there are going to be articles there where people are going to say, Roth IRA conversion layup. Yeah, okay, well now I've converted $15,000 as a couple into Roth IRA conversion and I have to pay tax today. Well, guess what? You've also triggered the loss of your subsidy, which is $400 a month. Great. So now you've deferred taxes, which may or may not, you may or may not actually have deferred, right, to, to pay the tax today because you're afraid of higher tax rates in the future. That's your bottom line rationale. Well, congratulations, you now have to owe the federal government $4,800 the next time you file taxes. That happens. That happens. I'm going to have another video, not, you know, with an illustration about that. But my point is, I swerved here just to illustrate to you that the topic looks like it's singular. We don't live in that world. That, that world doesn't actually exist. But what ends up happening is that you're being sent an advertisement or you're reading a Google, you know, an article, you're, you're watching a YouTube video, which is saying, you know, here's why Roth IRA conversions are great. And that's it. And oh yeah, by the way, you know, I'm your blah, blah, you know, investment advisor. Click to say hello. Well, that's presumed that that person also knows something about this. And unfortunately, what ends up happening is that's the way our world works. I'll stop here. Okay? Now, <clears throat> last thing about life's a gamble, which is that, which it kind of goes to with the essay. So a couple of weeks ago, I sent out an essay. It was called Medicare and Me. It talked about Medicare and the fact that this single policy, this program, this federal program does do a lot of helping others, helping others. And like I said, this is a person that you may not know, you may not even agree with, you know, you have nothing in common with this person. When that person understands Medicare better, as hopefully you do, all of us are better off. Why? That person can pay a bill who needs to go to buy to go to 7-Eleven, who goes to CVS, who goes and eats out at a restaurant. Right? We're gonna, I'm going to end the newsletter on talking about all the ripple effects of COVID-19 on the economy and the fact that the, the Fed is maybe overwhelmed here. They may be overwhelmed. <clears throat> the fact of the matter is, is that when someone else understands Medicare, every not only is the healthcare system and the healthcare system is better off as well, right? Because then, then you have less unpaid bills. The system has less unpaid bills. I need to nail down the price. The way I have nailed down the price is I have nobody going with an unpaid bill. That's an important component. So forget whether or not you're a Democrat or Republican or ACA lover or not, et cetera, et cetera. 
the fact of the matter is the system is better off when unpaid bills are at a minimum. I think that should be fairly logical, right? <clears throat> 7-Eleven can drop down their prices of gum if there's zero shoplifting. Same thing. Same thing. Okay. That's it about Medicare. That's it about the, about the book and things like that. Let's just go on to... <coughs> Sorry about that. I don't have COVID-19. Let's go on to Medicare itself. June 30th. June 30th, very important date. I have no idea why more people aren't taking advantage of this, right? Special enrollment period ends on June 13th. Normally, what happens is that the Medicare open enrollment period ends on March 30th, where you can switch amongst Medicare Advantage plan. Quickly, what can you do in the last 10 days of June? Number one, if you're an existing Medicare Advantage plan owner, you can switch plans, period. There are reasons to do so. You don't like your plan for whatever reason, network problem, Pres prescription drugs, too expensive for a particular prescription drug. There are reasons to not switch, but a lot of them have been taken down. And the reason they've been taken down is because Medicare Advantage itself has become so much more competitive. That's the fact. For example, many Medicare Advantage plans have $0 health, and health deductible, $0 drug deductible, PPO. This exists depending on where you live. And nevertheless, we also just leave it alone. I'd rather lose the you know, $600 extra that I'm overpaying for my out-of-pocket costs. Why? When the option is free, you're violating you know, rule number one of financial planning for me, which is... All in unison, you should all be saying, Jay always is on this soapbox, don't give away free options. Don't give away free options. And this book is talking about that when you first turn 65, the option is free to choose. Use it. Here it is for Medicare Advantage owners. Second one, if you want to cancel your, your prescription drug, your Medicare Advantage plan, you can do so and switch back to original Medicare Part A, Part B, and purchase a standalone prescription plan. The caveat here is that if you stay with that configuration alone, A, B, and D, you still are facing unlimited out-of-pocket expenses. Right? If you go to the hospital, then you have to pay the Part A deductibles per, per benefit period. Part B, the 20% after meeting the Part B deductible. That's still yours. As you know, this book, thousands of YouTube videos talk about Medigap. Can you apply for Medigap? Yes, but time's running out. We don't actually have 10 days left. We have basically one or two days left. Right? If you want to switch from Medicare Advantage to Medigap, you can do so, but you need to do so now. And the reason is, I need to make sure that you get accepted. I need to make sure you get accepted before canceling your Medicare Advantage plan. Canceling your Medicare Advantage plan and switching to Part D, that takes an hour. Not even an hour, okay? However, getting accepted to Medigap is based on the seller granting you permission, and you're probably going to have to pass medical underwriting. Well, un unless you live in a particular state or you have special enrollment periods, you know, crazy people write books about this stuff, right? But the fact of the matter is many people would have to pass medical underwriting. That it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. Some of you, zero medications, it's going to breeze through. You're going to make it. No problem. But you have you can't wait till Thursday when the deadline is what next Monday next Tuesday okay that is it's not going to happen that quickly we need a few business days so if this is your if this is the path that you want to take now's the time you're right at the deadline okay what else can you do last and very importantly if you've not enrolled in Medicare A and B either one A or B and you want to do so Here's the time. Again, again. Now, 
this one, can you turn in your application by June 30th? The answer is yes. Will it then be set to July 1st effective date? The answer is yes. Will you know this by July 1st? The answer is no, right? I mean, if you call me up on June 29th and say, Jay, I just sent my stuff into SSA, am I gonna get my card on June 30th, on July 1st? The answer is gonna be no, okay? But on July 15th, your card will read July 1st, July 1st, right? So I'm not concerned about that, but this is for all of those people who didn't, they misunderstood COBRA very easily. They misunderstood how the interaction with employer plan worked, at what age. They lost their plan a number of months ago. They thought they were going to ride COBRA for 18 months when they find out that COBRA is only good for actually eight of those months. Okay, that those types of things can happen. People haven't read my book, etc., etc. This is the time to correct that. Please do so. Please do so. This deadline coming soon. Coming soon. Second point under Medicare. Second point under Medicare is the diabetes. So 2021 will bring lower co-pays, maximum of 30 per prescription, 30 or 35, you'll forgive me, my computer's off, 30 to 35 dollars for the prescription. Now it looks like there are going to be specialized Part D plans for this. Special Part D plans for this. What does this mean? This means I'm giving you the sneak preview right now. The only logical conclusion is going to be that some of the plans are going to include this and some of the plans are not going to include this. Which means if you're insulin dependent, that you're going to have to check. And oh yeah, by the way, if you're not on insulin, you're going to have to check. Everyone's going to have to check. So for the persons on insulin, it's going to be obvious, right? You're immediately into one of these plans. I'm going to be end up figuring this out. I already know what my work looks like in the autumn. I already know what it is. Absolutely. And it, because every person with insulin has got to go on a specialized plan if they have the Medigap and insulin you know, configuration. The issue is that the rest of the plans are also going to be affected. They're going to be affected. Right, Because remember that the pot of money, a subsidy comes from the federal pot of money to Part D plans as a whole. And if some of the discount is going into the insulin, that means other of the discounts is going to be taken away from non-insulin plans. Very complicated stuff here. Very complicated. Because this is the balance of the fiscal problem that we have here. We've got a fixed number of dollars. We know that insulin is a huge problem. So while on the optics to the person on insulin, it's going to be a slam dunk. It's going to be a slam dunk. They're immediately going to find one of these plans. Their, their costs are going to be lower. Their overall cost. The premium may be higher, but the costs overall are going to be lower. But the issue is that what hasn't gotten much publicity is the fact that the non-insulin, the non-specialized plan are also going to be affected. I highly suspect this is going to be the case. I find no other way around this, in fact. What about Medicare Advantage? Under insulin, here's a couple of things that you may not have known, which I actually, well, Readers of the newsletter know. Depending on the carrier, so this has been a trend to, you know, the pressure has been on carriers, the pressure has been on the insulin manufacturer, which there are three, right? And the Medicare Advantage carriers, the smart guys in the room, and they are, no question. There are many instances now, there are many instances where if you look very hard, when you look very, very hard, that insulin copay is zero. 
insulin copay can be zero under certain Medicare Advantage plans. I can't tell you how valuable this is. Right? This is a th this is multi thousands of dollars a year. So the fact of the matter is, do I think you're going to have lower costs for insulin? Yes, I do under Medicare Advantage. I do think that you know, but it's not actually going to be as groundbreaking there because the Medicare Advantage carriers have already many have already considered that. What you will see is the big national carriers also having to respond. Let's go to uh, the U more Medicare um, on YouTube. Two videos, two new videos. The first one, Plan F and Plan G. For many people, you know, Plan F is no longer available for sale if your Part A and Part B are already active, right? You needed both Part A and Part B to be active prior to January 1st, 2020. For them, you can go to Plan F. You can go to Plan F. Who are you? Who are you? You work at a small employer, you enrolled in Part A and Part B, then you decide to retire. You can buy Plan F. So that's not going to be zero people, by the way. Right? That is not zero. The video, that particular video has to do with yeah, but it's no longer available. Do I really want to get it? There are reasons still. And the reason is that there's $198, which is the Part B deductible. People on Plan G, they know. They've got to pay for it. What I didn't tell you, or it said, in, you know, you'll have to squint pretty hard in the book. It's in there. Which is to tell you, look... That's well and good, but administering 198 presumes billing is correct. Billing is efficient, fast, right? Because what ends up happening, let's say Dr. 1 and Dr. 2. You go to Dr. 1 on January 1st. You go to Dr. Number 2 on January 5th. All right, by the time you get to January, to the January 5th appointment, let's say you thought you've already paid for the Part B deductible. If Dr. 2 doesn't understand that because they've called up Medicare, guess what? They're going to hand you a bill. And oh yeah, by the way, let's say you have Medicare supplement, right, Medigap. If Medigap doesn't understand you've met the Part B deductible, they're not going to pay anything for, part, for the second doctor appointment. Nada. So you can see what ends up happening. Back to life's a gamble. Okay, this is the insurance company now trying to play, pay its claims. No, that's not it. That's not it. The record was wrong. It was slowly updated. This is a reason that you can have Plan F instead of Plan G. The second video is Plan G versus Plan N. So these are the two most popular plans. And I go through the analysis of how I look at these two plans in verbal talk. Here it's in the book, but candidly, I give you some more editorializing on the video. So check it out there. That for whatever... The crazy thing about this video stuff and newsletter and book is we're never really, I'm never really sure which one people are even paying attention to. And oh yeah, that, that, we'll get back to that at the end. Okay, the last topic, um, because I see we're running you know, pretty much to what I thought we would go to. The last topic here is you've seen over this past week a flood of comments from the Federal Reserve. So people who don't know or don't keep up on, you know, the central bank of the United States is called the Federal Reserve. The head is Bob Powell. You see his picture there on the newsletter on, the, on your laptop or computer, phone, wherever you're reading your, your newsletter. That guy is the talking head, and he's got a pretty awful job. Because the balancing act that he has to tell us all is, number one, that... Please, if you don't go shopping, that we're going to be in this problem for a long time, right? We need people to consume stuff coming soon. Second point under Medicare. Second point under Medicare is the diabetes. 
So 2021 will bring lower copays, maximum of 30 per prescription, 30 or 35. You'll forgive me, my computer's off. 30 to 35 dollars for the prescription. Now it looks like there are going to be specialized Part D plans for this. Special Part D plans for this. What does this mean? This means that I'm giving you the sneak preview right now. The only logical conclusion is going to be that some of the plans are going to include this and some of the plans are not going to include this. Which means if you're insulin dependent, that you're going to have to check. And oh yeah, by the way, if you're not on insulin, you're going to have to check. Everyone's going to have to check. So for the persons on insulin, it's going to be obvious, right? You're immediately into one of these plans. I'm going to be end up figuring this out. I already know what my work looks like in the autumn. I already know what it is. Absolutely. And it, because every person with insulin has got to go on a specialized plan if they have the Medigap and insulin you know, configuration. The issue is that the rest of the plans are also going to be affected. They're going to be affected, right? Because remember that the pot of money, a subsidy comes from the federal pot of money two Part D plans as a whole. And if some of the discount is going into the insulin, that means other of the discounts is going to be taken away from non-insulin plans. Very complicated stuff here. Very complicated. Because this is the balance of the fiscal problem that we have here. We've got a fixed number of dollars. We know that insulin is a huge problem. So while on the optics to the person on insulin, it's going to be a slam dunk. It's going to be a slam dunk. They're immediately going to find one of these plans. Their, their costs are going to be lower. Their overall cost. The premium may be higher, but the costs overall are going to be lower. But the issue is that what hasn't gotten much publicity is the fact that the non insulin, the non-specialized plan, are also going to be affected. I highly suspect this is going to be the case. I find no other way around this, in fact. What about Medicare Advantage? Under insulin, here's a couple of things that you may not have known, which I actually, well, readers of the newsletter know. Depending on the carrier, so this has been a trend to, you know, the pressure has been on carriers. The pressure has been on the insulin manufacturer, of which there are three, right? And the Medicare Advantage carriers, the smart guys in the room, and they are, no question. There are many instances now, there are many instances where if you look very hard, when you look very, very hard, that... Insulin copay is zero. Insulin copay can be zero under certain Medicare Advantage plans. I can't tell you how valuable this is. Right? This is a th this is multi thousands of dollars a year. So the fact of the matter is, do I think you're going to have lower costs for insulin? Yes, I do under Medicare Advantage. I do think that you know, but it's not actually going to be as groundbreaking there because the Medicare Advantage carriers have already, many have already considered that. What you will see is the big national carriers also having to respond. Let's go to uh, the U more Medicare. Um, on YouTube, two videos, two new videos. The first one. Plan F and Plan G. For many people you know, Plan F is no longer available for sale if your Part A and Part B are already active. Right? You needed both Part A and Part B to be active prior to January 1st, 2020. For them, you can go to Plan F. You can go to Plan F. Who are you? Who are you? You work at a small employer, 
you enrolled in Part A and Part B, then you decide to retire, you can buy Plan F. So that's not going to be zero people, by the way. Right? That is not zero. The video, that particular video has to do with, yeah, but it's no longer available. Do I really want to get it? There are reasons still. And the reason is that there's $198, which is the Part B deductible. People on Plan G, they know. They've got to pay for it. What I didn't tell you, or it said, in, you know, you'll have to squint pretty hard in the book. It's in there, which is to tell you, look, that's well and good, but administering 198 presumes billing is correct. Billing is efficient, fast, right? Because what ends up happening, let's say doctor one and doctor two, you go to doctor one on January 1st, you go to doctor number two on January 5th, all right? By the time you get to January to the January 5th appointment, let's say you thought you've already paid for the Part B deductible. If Dr. 2 doesn't understand that because they've called up Medicare, guess what? They're going to hand you a bill. And oh yeah, by the way, let's say you have Medicare supplement, right, Medigap. If Medigap doesn't understand you've met the Part B deductible, they're not going to pay anything for, part, for the second doctor appointment. Nada. So you can see what ends up happening. Back to life's a gamble. Okay, this is the insurance company now trying to play, play its claims. No, that's not it. That's not it. The record was wrong. It was slowly updated. This is a reason that you can have Plan F instead of Plan G. The second video is Plan G versus Plan N. So these are the two most popular plans. And I go through the analysis of how I look at these two plans in verbal talk. Here, it's in the book. But candidly, I give you some more editorializing on the video. So check it out there. That for whatever the crazy thing about this video stuff and newsletter and book is we're never really I'm never really sure which one people are even paying attention to. And oh yeah, that that we'll get that to that at the end. Okay, the last topic, um, because I see we're running, you know, pretty much to what I thought we would go to. The last topic here is you've seen over this past week a flood of comments from the Federal Reserve. So people who don't know or don't keep up on, you know, the central bank of the United States is called the Federal Reserve. The head is Bob Powell. You see his picture there on the newsletter on, the, on your laptop or computer, phone, wherever you're reading your, your newsletter. That guy is the talking head, and he's got a pretty awful job. Because the balancing act that he has to tell us all is, number one, that please, if you don't go shopping, that we're going to be in this problem for a long time, right? We need people to consume stuff. 